how do you pronounce Elvish names in Tolkien? In this video, I'd like to give you eight tips to help you out. Now, this is not a comprehensive analysis of Elvish phonetics. If you'd like a video like that, let me know in the comments. This is really just designed to level up your pronunciation and maybe answer a few questions that you may have about how it all works. So let's get started. Tip one, the letter C. The letter C is always pronounced K as if it were written with a K. It's not pronounced S or CH in any Elvish words. And so we have things like Celeborn or Kirith Ungul. Similarly, the letter G is always pronounced as G, not J. Now note this only applies to Elvish words, and so Hobbit names like Bolger don't follow this rule. Tip 2. The letter combination DH. DH is just a voiced version of TH. Listen for the difference between thistle and thistle. In Elvish, we would use TH for the first sound and DH for the second sound. Th versus the. And so we have words like karavras. The. Karavras. Tip 3. Vowels. Now the most important thing about vowels in the Elvish languages in Tolkien is that they pretty much always make the same sounds. They don't change depending on the context like they tend to do in English. And so we always have a, e, e, o, u. The letter e is never pronounced e, it's always e. And the letter a is always pronounced a and not a or a. And so technically it's Aragorn and Galadriel and Faramir, not Aragorn, Galadriel or Galadriel and not Faramir. Another thing to watch for is that in English we have the tendency to reduce unstressed vowels to just a uh, a sound called a schwa. And so in words like Silmarillion, it really should be Silmarillion. Make sure you pronounce each vowel with its normal quality. Tip 4. The letter R. Now you can trill it if you want, but I think even more important is that where you have a vowel before the R, don't let the R change the quality of the vowel. Pronounce the vowel like you normally would. And so it's Miriel and Asildur where the E and the U keep their sounds even though they're followed by the R. Rolling the R, trilling the R can help with that quite a bit. Tip 5. Diphthongs. Now, diphthongs are just vowels that involve sliding from one mouth position to the other. They're a single syllable, but they're really kind of a combination of sounds. And so in my name, James, we have the vowel that starts in the et position and ends in the it position, a, a, James. Now in Elvish, diphthongs are always written as two separate letters, indicating the start and the end point of the sound. And so E-I is always pronounced A. A-U is A-U, 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 A-U. And so we get words like Sauron. A-I and A-E are pretty hard to distinguish, and Tolkien even says so in Appendix E. They both basically make the sound I. And so we have words like Edine, not Edain. Now combining this tip and the previous one, we get words like Ainur where the diphthong is an I diphthong, and remember, the R does not change the sound of the U, so it's I nur. Now, if we bring in tip two, we get the great name Mythros. So Mythros, note the pronunciation of the diphthong, I, and the DH, that's a the sound, Mythros. And of course, we have the Cinderin greeting, my Govanen. Tip six, diacritics. These are those little marks above the vowels. Now, the important thing is that these do not indicate stress. The acute and circumflex indicate that the vowel is long. The acute is much more common. The circumflex is really only used in single syllable words. But in both cases, they indicate that the vowel is long. Now, remember, vowel length does not mean that the vowel changes its quality like it does in English. A long version of a vowel is just the same sound pronounced for longer. The two dots, or diuresis, written above a vowel, indicate that the letter is to be pronounced separately. And so we have a word like Ainulindale. The two dots above the E are just a reminder 
that the e at the end should be pronounced separately. It's really just a courtesy, even if the two dots did not exist, Ainulindale would be the correct pronunciation. We see the two dots used a lot in the EA combination. It's a reminder again that this is not a diphthong, that the two letters should be pronounced separately, as separate syllables. And so we have Feanor. Feanor, three syllables, not two. And of course, Eärendil. The song of Eärendil. Eärendil. Of Eärendil. Sorry, Stephen Colbert. Tip seven, stress. What syllable do we put the stress on? Well, if there's only one syllable, that's where you put the stress. If there are two syllables, you put it on the first of the syllables. But if there are three or more syllables, then whether you put it on the second last syllable or the third last syllable depends on the weight of the second last syllable. If the second last syllable has a long vowel, or it ends in a consonant, then it's said to be a heavy syllable and it will take the stress. Otherwise, the stress will be on the preceding syllable, the third last syllable. And so we have pronunciations like arresea, arresea. Now this sometimes trips people up because they think that the two dots are indicating where the stress should be. But remember, those two dots are just there to separate the E from the A. The stress is on the third last syllable because that second last syllable is just a short vowel without a extra consonant at the end. And then we have words like Isildur. Because of the L in the second to last syllable, sil, that's considered a heavy syllable and so it takes the stress. Isildur, not Isildur. Now in Appendix E that's described a little differently. It's described in terms of there being multiple consonants, the L and the D. But it really amounts to the same thing, because what's going on there is the last syllable starting with a D, the second last syllable ends in an L. And so those two consonants are really the start of the one syllable and the end of the other syllable. Tip 8. Mistakes are okay. There are different accents in Middle Earth. Appendix E makes that clear, that people in Gondor pronounce things differently to people in Rivendell, for example. The hobbits often got it wrong. There's even a footnote that talks about the rustic pronunciation that the hobbits had of vowels. And it's noted that Frodo was unusual in his ability to pronounce the vowels correctly. I get things wrong all the time. And Christopher Tolkien and even John Ronald himself, if you listen to recordings of them, are sometimes inconsistent. So the most important thing is to not worry too much about it and certainly don't judge others for their pronunciation. But if you do want to try to pronounce words more along the lines that Tolkien describes them in Appendix E, then I hope you found this video useful. Please check out my other videos and I hope to see you in another one soon. Bye-bye.